Seven six. Objective to solve problems involving percents. We're doing percent problem here, people. We're going to be solving problems. Yes, word problems. That's what I'm talking about, man. Involving percents. And you can do it. You will do it. You'll do it successfully, and you're going to be awesome. I know. Because you're awesome. Now, when a price or an amount changes, you can find the percent increase or decrease by using this. Here's a little thing. This is the, the book, the text actually gives you this little thing in gray in section 7.6. It says the percent change over 100 is equal to the change in the number or the change in the amount or the change in the price over the original number or the original price or whatever. I like to look at it this way. The percent change over 100 is whatever the new thing, the new number minus the old over the old. Because when I do my new minus my old, that gives me the, 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 how much it changed. The new price minus the old price. So change is always how much it differs. So if something initially cost 120 and now it costs 140 and I want to know how much it changed, well, 140 minus 120, it changed 20. It went up 20. That makes sense? The new, which was the new minus the old, that would give me my change, my change in number. So that's a way we can look at it, all right? That's the way I like kind of generalize it, right? So, here we go, here's a little problem. The price of a pair of jeans changed from 80 to 60. What was the percent change? It changed from 80 to 60. So let's see. So let's see, I have percent change over 100. I'm trying to find the percent change, so I'll call that X. New minus old over old. It changed from here to this. So here's my new. Here's my old. So new minus old, 60 minus 80 over old, 80. So that's the same thing as 60 minus 80 is negative 20, right? All right, good. So how do I solve this? I get multiply diagonal. 80x is negative 20 times 100 is negative 2,000. Divide by 80. These are gone. It right. How many 8's go into negative 200? And that will give me my percent change. Well, let's see. The same thing is asking how many 4's go into negative 100, right? Same thing is asking how many 1's go into negative 25. It was a 25, a negative 25% change. Meaning, it decreased 25%. Nice, a decrease. <laughs> cool. Alright, let's see what's going on here. Roger paid $27 for a membership. This was an increase of 8% from last year. What was the price last year? Well, we know the percent change. It was an 8% increase, so it's a positive 8% change. So sometimes we use this triangle, the Greek symbol delta, to represent change, so percent change. Well, let's see, the percent change was 8% over 100 equals, let's see, Roger paid for membership. This was an increase from last year. So last year is the old. We don't know last year's price. This is my new. So new minus old over old. Well, we're trying to find last year, so we'll let x equal last year's price. So new minus old would be 27 minus x over old. So that would be my change in price over my original price. It changed this much. How do I solve the same thing as before? 8 times x, 100 times this, 8x equals uh, 2700 minus 100x, add 100x, I get 108x equals 2700, and you can solve that from there. I don't have enough time to do that. I have a few more problems to do. All right, but you could just do uh, how many 108s go into 2700. All right. Now we're talking about investing, and you know, we, we have a little formula here that the amount um, you invest times the annual interest rate will give you your annual simple interest. And when they say annual simple interest, that just means the actual money, not the percent. So if you gain, suppose you invest $100, you gain, you know, you, you, you earn 7%. Your simple interest would be seven dollars. You ordered is would be the dollar amount. So I look like it. Like look at this: the money you invested times the rate, which is sometimes called your interest, your dividend, whatever, um, whatever percent it is, dividend um, equals your gain. That's how much you gained, right? That's your profit. It's also known as your income. 
Okay. So here we go. How much would you have to invest to make $1,000 at a rate of 4%? Hmm. So what are they asking? How much I'd have to invest? They're asking about this. They gave me a rate, 4%, and they gave me a gain, 1,000. So I just use my equation here. This is my unknown. So let x equal the amount you need to invest. So x times rate, 4%, 4 one-hundredths, is my gain, 1,000. Solve for x. Isn't that nice? And how do we solve for x in this? Well, I multiply both sides by the LCD, 100. So I multiply this side by 100, it cancels out. I multiply this side by 100, I add two zeros. Divide this side by 1 by 4. x equals 100,000 divided by 4, which would be, x would be, $25,000. Nice! So you invest $25,000. 4%, you make a thousand bucks. All right, that nice? Nice. Here we go. Sheila invested part of $6,000 at 6% and the rest at 11%. Her total income was 460. How much was invested at 11%? Well, this is interesting because she had some at this much and another amount at this much. So I'm going to do is set up a table. I'm going to set up a table that includes her 6% investings and her 11%. Okay? And we can use this money times rate equals well, how much the gain. So it's money times rate equals gain. Okay, which would be this would be my percent. This would be my money, right? So let's see. We can fill this chart in. Look around. We know the rate here is six percent, right? Six hundredths. This is eleven hundredths. Okay. So here we go. So Sheila invested part of $6,000 at six, so I know the total, remember we put the totals down the bottom? So I know this, she invested $6,000 in all. And I also know her total gain was 460, so whatever she gained off this piece and this piece together made 460. Hmm, so let's see. Now I need to set this baby up. The great thing about a chart is if I can get two columns filled, I can always fill the third column. So I'm looking, I'm saying, hmm, how can I do this? There's a couple ways. I could call this, if I know that these two add up to 460, I could call this x and this 460 minus x. And then I'd have to do gain divided by rate to get the amount here and then solve. But, you know, and then add those and make them equal to 6,000. But, or I could say, all right, suppose she's invested x at 6%, what was left to invest at 11? The rest. So if she invested X here, didn't she invest 6,000 minus that much? Would be this much? Yes. So there's my equation. I almost have it. I have, well, it's not right yet, but there's, you know, I'm pretty much there. Money invested times rate will give, give me my gain. So I multiply these guys. I get 6X over 100. Multiply these guys. 6,000 times 11 is 66,000. Whoa! 66,000 over 100 minus 11x over 100. And my equation is going to be this amount, the amount gained from the 6% plus the amount gained from my 11% equals the amount gained in all. Notice you can reduce these right here, right away. So it ends up becoming 660 minus 11x over 100. So the equation ends up looking like this. 6x over 100 plus this guy, 11x over 100. And you can't remember, forget about this 66 here. Multiply both sides by 100, and you find your x. I don't have time to do it. We have a 917. I have one more problem to do. Set up. Here we go. All right. Bruce invested in stocks paying 10.5. Maya, Maya invested 4,000 more in bonds paying 7.5. If Maya's income from investment is 75 more than Bruce's, find out how much each invested. Well, you just fill it in. You know the rates. You know Bruce invested X. Maya invested X plus 4,000. So I'm almost there. All the, the tricky part of this one is I multiply these guys. I get this times this. I fill it in here and call that Bruce's money. I do this times this. That'll be Maya's money. And I know that 
Maya's income was 75 more than Bruce, so I just say Maya equals Bruce's plus 75, and I'm done.